I was attempting to turn UMass from a one-star school into the next college football dynasty. We did pretty well in our first season as we went 8-5 with the Minutemen in season number one and won a bowl game with them as well. It was now time for season number two and we had some new faces coming to the team. Thomas Carter was our new starting tight end, taking over for last year's leading receiver Adam Tyler who graduated after the end of the season. True freshman receiver Casey Collins was starting as well as he came in and won the number one receiver spot in camp this spring. With the new players and progression we made in the offseason, our team was now a 68 overall headed into season number two and we were looking for a MAC championship this year. We were starting out our second season against number 23 Boston College. Starting out on their opening possession we were able to force a three and out against the Eagles offense and then we would drive down the field as Chris Roberts would find freshman Casey Collins for his first ever collegiate touchdown but of course once again we would end up missing our extra point somehow and so Boston College would take a one point lead over us because of it. We needed to stop on third down to prevent Boston College from driving down the field Field and extending their lead but we weren't able to do that as tight end Matt Sykes would catch this pass in the flats and break a tackle as he would bring it into the end zone for BC. Casey Collins in the offense though did not want to fall out of this game quickly and started driving their way down the field right before halftime as Chris Roberts would cap off the drive with a quarterback keeper on the read option from the one yard line. We would go for two and try to tie the game up but our freshman receiver couldn't hold on to this pass in traffic as this drop would give Boston College a chance to extend their lead near the end of the third quarter which they would end up capitalizing on. After going up by three possessions on us, our offense had still done absolutely nothing the entire second half as we were having trouble moving the ball at all and converting on third downs, but finally would convert late in the fourth quarter on a fourth down to set up a goal to go as Matt Sullivan would punch it in from three yards out to follow it up. And once again, we would go for two and finally we would be able to convert this time making it a seven point game. And that meant we needed to get a stop on this third and one, but once again, Matt Sykes would come up big for the Boston College offense and would end up picking up the first down for them, which would ultimately seal the victory for the Eagles. Our true freshman Casey Collins made a very good impression in his collegiate debut, but if we're going to improve upon last season, Chris Roberts needs to play better than he did this week, so let's see if he can bounce back at home against Colorado. We needed to win this game against Colorado this week, as the last thing we wanted to do is start the season 0-2 at home, because if we did that, Coach Husky might start losing the trust of the fan base, even after his great recruiting class last season. But it was almost halftime and we had still not found the end zone yet, so coach called a fullback dive on fourth and goal and the Minutemen would finally get on the board. That drive seemed to put some life into our offense as with less than a minute to go, they started marching down the field to put more points on the board before half and they would do just that as Chris Roberts would connect with Lee Moore for a seven yard touchdown pass. This hot streak for our offense continued into the second half as well as on our opening possession. We would find the end zone again, this time on a nine yard halfback screen to Matt Sullivan. Even though we had the lead now, our defense needed to get a stop against Colorado's offense, but unfortunately, they would cap this drive off with a touchdown to tie it up at 21 apiece. Chris Roberts and the offense took absolutely no time at all, though, to answer back with their own touchdown, and our defense would then finally come up with the stop needed against the Buffaloes and would force a punt. Once we got the ball back, all we needed to do was march down the field and punch it into the end zone one more time to seal the game, and true freshman Casey Collins would do just that for us on the wide receiver sweep, as we would get our first win of season number two. We had beat Vanderbilt last year and if we wanted to do that again we needed to bring our A game so naturally we went for a fake punt on fourth and nine in the first quarter and somehow pulled off the miraculous first down. That gutsy play call would result in a Lee Moore 18 yard touchdown to put us on the board first and it looked like our defense was going to get a stop on Vanderbilt's first offensive possession as well but they decided to go for it on fourth down as well and somehow Lewis White would get wide open in the end zone for a Vanderbilt touchdown and I mean just look at how much space he had in the end zone. Thankfully, it wouldn't take long for our offense to respond though as Chris Roberts would find Lee Moore for his second touchdown of the day and our defense would get another chance to stop the Commodores on fourth down and this time they would be successful. We didn't want to waste this opportunity we had now to go up by two possessions over Vanderbilt before halftime as Matt Sullivan would cap off this drive for us and we would be up by 15 over Vanderbilt starting the second half of play. That wouldn't last long though as they would find the end zone on their first second half possession and after a Chris Roberts fumble, our offense set them up with a perfect opportunity to find the end zone on our defense once again. They would go for the tie, but thankfully quarterback Lawrence Britt would overthrow his receiver in the flat, and we had managed to hold on to a slim two-point lead and weren't looking to let go of it at all. On a long third and 19, Chris Roberts would take a deep shot to Derek Cooper, who somehow found himself more wide open than a McDonald's drive through at 2 a.m., and Chris Roberts would convert the fourth and goal from the one on the quarterback sneak, which meant all we had to do this drive was get a stop 
stop and we would beat the Commodores for the second straight season. Unfortunately, our defense would end up giving up a touchdown with less than a minute to go, but our hands team would come up clutch recovering the onside kick for us. And with one last handoff to Matt Sullivan to run out the rest of the clock, we had defeated Vanderbilt for the second year in a row thanks to the great play of our quarterback, Chris Roberts. Our recruiting board was looking promising to start the year, and we were hoping with a big win against Penn State, we could clinch some higher ranked recruits. Penn State was not going to be easy for our MAC ranked defense compared to their Big Ten offense, but we managed to hold them to a field goal for their first points of the day. The game was looking promising for us as we would end up going up 14 to 3 over Penn State, but a turnover from our offense changed that score real quickly. As then Jordan Wilson, who had been killing us on the ground all day, would give Penn State the lead with a 16 yard touchdown run and then would score one through the air to extend their lead over us to two possessions. After falling behind, we needed points quickly and Lee Moore would deliver for us from 12 yards out, which that means we needed to get a stop here on third and eight, but were unsuccessful and would end up giving up another touchdown to the Penn State offense. That touchdown would put us out of the game for good, thanks in part to Jordan Wilson's monster game. We were starting conference play in season number two, and we were on the road against the Buffalo Bulls. We lost to them on the last play of the game last season, so we wanted to make sure nothing like that would happen again this year against them. And we were kind of right in that sense that nothing like that would be able to happen this time, because our defense wouldn't allow the game to be that close by the fourth quarter, as they would completely fall apart giving up three touchdowns in under three minutes in the second quarter. And then the floodgates would open against them in the third quarter, as we would get trounced by Buffalo in our conference opener. Chris Roberts continued to play poorly, and our offense really struggled because of it. So headed into our next matchup against Kent State, I made the controversial decision to start our true freshman quarterback, Antonio Cummings. This was Antonio Cummings' first career start as a true freshman, and he needed to make the most of it. And I can't lie, I was very impressed by the first drive he put together with the offense today. If he plays well in this game, we could have a controversy going forward, because Chris Roberts has been struggling heavily in our first few games, and when he's been struggling, our offense can't move the ball at all. But Cummings today seemed to have given the offense a fresh breath of new life in today's game, so we're going to give him another chance next week as the starter. Once again, our freshman quarterback was looking impressive on our opening drive of the game, as he was looking to lead us down the field now for two straight touchdowns on two straight possessions, and he would do just that as he would score on a quarterback keeper on his feet. Not only was Antonio Cummings looking impressive, but our defense was backing up the offense with their great play today as well, as they would come away with two straight stops in the end zone against the Miami Redhawks offense, and Cummings would return the favor by connecting with fellow true freshman receiver Casey Collins for another touchdown. Our new quarterback wasn't done yet though, as he would bomb the defense deep with less than a minute to go before halftime looking to find some more points, and he would do just that as he would connect with Lee Moore, and behind Antonio Cummings' great play tonight, we would walk away with another conference victory. Our freshman quarterback was on a hot streak, and we were hoping that it would continue in our next conference matchup, but it looked like the defense was going to make that harder on our offense than they would like today. Thankfully, at the end of the first quarter, Antonio Cummings and the offense were starting to put a drive together and would cap it off with a 15-yard Thomas Carter touchdown reception to cut the lead. No matter what the offense did, though, our defense just couldn't get a stop today against Eastern Michigan, but Antonio Cummings wasn't letting us out of this game. The offense would have a chance to tie it up at 14 right before halftime as they had the ball and were driving, and our freshman quarterback would do just that as he would find Thomas Carter for a second touchdown of the day. Our defense would come out swinging to start the second half as well, as they would not only get their first stop of the day, but their first takeaway as well. And our offense was then set up perfectly to take the lead, but Cummings wouldn't be able to get out of the pocket on third down, so we would play it safe and only take a three-point lead over the Eagles. Of course, they would go down and take the lead right back from us, and Antonio Cummings now had less than a minute to go to lead the offense down the field to score again. Would our freshman quarterback overcome the pressure and be able to lead us down the field for his first ever game-winning drive? It looked like it might just happen as he would find tight end Thomas Carter wide open and would take it all the way down inside the 10-yard line of Eastern Michigan, as we would send out Jamal Freeman to kick the game-winning field goal, and our freshman quarterback would celebrate his first ever game-winning drive. Antonio Cummings would look to make it four wins as a starting quarterback now, as we were taking on Western Michigan in the snow, and were off to a pretty good start, as in the second quarter, he would connect with Lee Moore inside the red zone for his first touchdown pass of the day, and our offense was clicking on all cylinders as once again, Antonio Cummings would complete another touchdown pass, as it would just be up to our defense the rest of the game to hold Western Michigan's offense to minimal points in the second half, and they had been doing a great job of doing exactly that so far. Antonio Cummings would connect with Thomas Carter, who would make a crazy acrobatic catch in the end zone for Cummings' fourth touchdown pass of the day, and our freshman quarterback was now 4-0. If we wanted any chance to win our division, we had to keep up with Buffalo, who currently only had one conference loss. So that made these last three games of the season especially 
important for our team. It said a lot that Coach Husky was still rolling with the true freshman quarterback as he thought he would give us the best chance in these last three games. And Antonio Cummings was proving that Coach Husky had put his trust in the right guy for the job as he would lead the offense down the field with under 40 seconds to go in the half to go up by two possessions. Our defense had been doing an equally great job all day holding Toledo as they had only managed two field goals through the third quarter so far. Unfortunately for us, they were starting to mount a comeback here at the start of the fourth quarter, but Antonio Cummings didn't look like he was going to let that happen on his watch when he got back on the field with the offense. After driving us down the field, he would put us on the board yet again with his feet this time, and even though our defense would give up another late touchdown, our division hopes were still alive with this win at home. Our next game against Bowling Green was going to be a real test, as we were in a three-way tie with them and Buffalo for the lead of the division headed into this game. That meant we needed to win this game if we wanted any chance to clinch our division and head to Detroit at the end of the year. Their defense had done a good job throughout the first half of holding our offense, but finally right before halftime it looked like Antonio Cummings was starting to break through for us as he would drive down and tie it up headed into halftime. We would get the ball to start the second half and our freshman quarterback was looking to repeat his previous drive right before halftime and he would do just that as he would cap it off with a touchdown pass to Lemore. Our defense now needed to get a stop which had been tough to do so far today and we thought we did on third down but they would go for it on fourth and six and sure enough once again we could not get the stop we needed against Bowling Green. We had another chance on third and goal for a stop but could not get it once again and it looked like their defense could get a stop against us as Antonio Cummings would roll out of the pocket here and his pass would fall incomplete on third and five so we would have to settle for only three points on this possession and once again it was up to our defense here on fourth down to get a stop against the Falcons which we would finally do and after picking up one more first down on the ground we were one game closer to winning our division. It was now time for our final game of the season and the division would come down to this final week of games. To make things worse though we lost senior running back Matt Sullivan for the rest of the season to an abdominal tear and that meant his collegiate career was officially over for him. We definitely were noticing his absence in the starting lineup as we were in the second quarter and still had not scored any points yet but thankfully that would change on the last play for us of the first half as Antonio Cummings would bomb it deep and connect with Casey Collins for a touchdown but the freshman quarterback would have to play a lot better in the second half if we wanted to win today. He looked like he was turning things around though as he would drive us down the field for a touchdown on our first second half possession and on our very next possession would find Thomas Carter who would break two tackles and just like that it was now a tied ball game. At the end of the third quarter we would take our first lead of the entire game over Ball State as both our offense and our defense had really seemed to step up their play here in the second half compared to the first. We all knew a chance to play in the MAC championship game was dependent on us winning this game today but Ball State was not making it easy for us to do that. They would come out with an onside kick with just over a minute to go but thankfully we would recover it and our now starting running back Craig Hodge would pick up one last first down for us on the ground and we finished our season the way we needed to. It was now all up to chance for us as Bowling Green and Buffalo were playing and we needed Buffalo to lose this game. We were still currently tied for first place with them but if they won they had the tiebreaker over us still. So the only way we could go to Detroit was with a Bowling Green win. Thankfully the Falcons would step up big for us tonight as they would defeat Buffalo making us the winners of the MAC East division and sending us to Detroit for the MAC championship game as we would be taking on Toledo once again. We'd beat the Rockets 24 to 18 at home just a few weeks ago so that loss was still fresh on Toledo's mind headed into this game. That game for us earlier this season was much too close for comfort as well so we were hoping we could handle business a little better this time around against the Rockets. We were off to a good start but it was still close and they would tie it up before halftime but Antonio Cummings seemed to be the master of one minute drives right before halftime so far in his career as he would manage to get us all the way down to the Toledo one yard line in only two plays on our last possession and Craig Hodge would cap off the three play drive for us. Our defense managed to get a stop against Toledo to open up the second half but by the fourth quarter we found ourselves down by three. This was a huge third and ten for us as Antonio Cummings screen pass would get knocked down at the line so we would have to settle for three but Jamal Freeman would miss the field goal. Our defense would then come up clutch and get a stop but now we desperately needed points. The true freshman quarterback was showing great poise as he was effortlessly moving our offense down the field and that would set up the go-ahead touchdown rush by Craig Hodge. With 17 seconds left, Toledo was just hoping for their prayers to be answered at this point, but Jacob Wright would come through for us and intercept this pass as Antonio Cummings in the offense would take a knee and we had officially done it here in season two. UMass had won the MAC conference with a true freshman quarterback as that win would land us in the GoDaddy.com bowl game against Western Kentucky. Coach Husky was in his second second bowl game of his career and he was looking to make it his second bowl win as a coach here with UMass. Antonio Cummings, our true freshman quarterback, was off to a hot start for us today as he would put us on the board 
scored with our first touchdown with some shifty footwork and quick running at the end of the first quarter. Our defense would force a quick turnover and we'd find ourselves right back in the end zone as for some reason the options seemed to be working extremely well for the offense today. We weren't the fastest team in the nation but the ground game was working for us so far and we just needed the defense to make sure that the Hilltoppers wouldn't keep up with us on the scoreboard. With only 17 seconds left in the half and the ball in Antonio Cummings hands you know that spelt bad news for the Western Kentucky defense as he would set us up for a field goal right before halftime but to start the second half our defense still couldn't seem to get a stop when we needed them to against the Hilltoppers offense. Maybe they were just terrified of their mascot on the sideline. Nonetheless though Western Kentucky would make this only a three-point game and would knock down one last field goal to end the third quarter as we headed into the fourth with a one possession lead. A big third down and four here as Antonio Cummings would look across the middle of the field but his pass would be picked off by the defense but thankfully we would manage to force a punt and inside Western Kentucky territory Cummings would find Thomas Carter wide open who would take this into the end zone to extend our lead. With one last chance for Western Kentucky Wilson's pass would be knocked incomplete on fourth and three and Coach Husky was victorious once again as his team had won the GoDaddy.com Bowl. His 11-3 record this year would earn him a seven-year extension in the offseason, but he would lose his offensive coordinator. Not many starters were leaving the team this offseason, but there were three key recruits Coach Husky was still going after. He would end up focusing on trying to sign four-star defensive end Terrence Logan and five-star receiver Chris Jones, and Coach Husky would manage to sign both of them, as he would end up with the 37th ranked class in the country. And it would be important for us to have better recruiting classes now going forward as we were officially moving to the ACC Atlantic Division now. Our only player ranked 90 overall was senior quarterback Chris Roberts who was benched last season. So the two big questions headed into season three were who would be our starting quarterback and how will UMass do in the ACC?